All right, cheers to the vinyl community and people who are just strolling. My name is Ty. Welcome to my channel. All right, I got a few goodies to show. Um, played a couple. I uh, played two private events. Played one on Valentine's Day, and then um, they enjoyed it so much. Another couple hired me for a private event on Friday. So, did those. So, uh, anyways, okay, let's, uh, had a great time, and then um, don't really have anything this week and coming up uh, Sunday. My blues band's gonna play. So, anyways, what did I get in the mail? Lag Wagon. Pretty sure this is their first album called Duh. And uh, this album, I don't even have a copy on CD actually. Uh, back in 2013, uh, when my uh, the band I'm pl I play in was on tour, uh, my drummer at the time was playing this album a shit ton, and so we uh, we became the album of the tour. I feel like. There's always a handful of albums that you play a lot on each different tour. And this album's pretty cool. It comes with a bonus album of uh, their first demo. And the, when they were called Section 8. And I guess Fat Mike hated their name so much, he said, I'll sign you guys as long as you change your name. So, I, so anyways. Uh, was able to get a good copy for Hella Cheap. It's a reissue. Where's the freaking hype sticker? I swear I had the hype sticker. I pulled it up. I put it aside. I thought I did. Here it is. Booyah. Alright, it says uh, reissue of the classic first Lagwagon album from 92. Remastered from the original tapes. Includes a bonus LP of the first Section 8 demo from 1989 and expanded artwork. So, super stoked. And, uh, how can I describe Lagwagon? They're like a better version of No Effects. <laughs> they, uh, similar type of riffs. Catchy, uh, the drummer's doing ripping the punk beat, but still doing little cool things. Trying to get some here, but yeah. And I'm sorry if I'm kind of like, I'm a, uh, this is just whew, got beat up from playing those two shows, I swear. All right, but yeah, it's on fluorescent green. The albums are normal black color, which I'm stoked about, it's standard. Trying to seems like they've way overdone the color thing on vinyl to where now it's like it's almost becoming more strange to get one that's not uh, to get one that's just standard black. All right, got a couple CDs. I think I might have already showed you one of these, but what the hell? So I'm pretty sure I showed you. I got I got sausage in the mail finally. Uh, I have a copy of this, but I don't have the case, and the copy is super beat up. So anyways, I bumped this last night. sounds super good. It's basically Primus. It's Primus with the original members. And then I got this. Coffin Break. Now, it's actually a... It's a twofer. It's two albums in one. It's Rupture and Psychosis. Now, when I was a young kid, I had the CD... I think we have the case. I can't remember if we did or not. But anyways, I finally got, well, finally, a, while, a long time ago, I got just Rupture on vinyl. And I put it on, and I was like, I swear there's some of it missing. Like, there was more songs. Because the CD I had was two albums. And it has 25 songs because of the two albums. So, super stoked to get a good copy of this. I want to get, I wish they did the split EP. I wish they did the two on vinyl, but I don't think they ever did. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. I don't know. I've never, I haven't seen it. So now uh, I'm going to at least get Cobb and Break Psychosis on vinyl. Uh, my next goal is to already have Rupture. But listening to this brought back some memories. I always thought it was a cool color, too. CD. And like CDs, I've always been a fan of CDs forever. Uh, I've done both, um, and cassette tapes. Uh, it seemed like back in the late 90s, mid 90s to 90s, I would go to the vinyl to get vinyl and records that were the stuff you couldn't get on CD. Stuff that was more just weird, and you get it for get it for a really good deal. 
and um, like Pink Floyd or Pat Metheny. And then CDs, I would usually get like stuff that was more contemporary that are like trying to get Cannibal Corpse or Sepultura or Slay or something. Or anyway, Santana or whatever. I would get the CD back in the 90s because they just didn't have it on vinyl. Like if you were to try to find like Slayer on vinyl, you would have to be like original pressing or like an import. But, but the, re, the reissues of a lot of your stuff like that they're doing now was more rare. You didn't see it that often. Which made it kind of cool which you would see a, a certain album that they re, reissued like Red Hot Chili Peppers' first album. A long time ago I got that as a reissue. Uh, Black Sabbath Volume 4. I had never seen the original one on vinyl and they had a reissue, a really nice reissue back like I got in 2002, 2004. So anyways. Alright, hopefully hopefully my video doesn't get flagged. Now here's a couple CDs I'm going to show. I should just do a whole episode on these eventually, but uh, really get to show. Albino Slug. Bugahead. I was just looking... I stumbled across this album for sale. It's going for like 300 bucks. I bought this at the show a long time ago. And what was kind of neat is I Bughead really wasn't promoting which album. He really didn't even say whether it was he had a new album out, but he played a song in his set and I I was like I recognized every song except one. And it was Albino Slug. And just by coincidence, I was like I don't recognize this album. I think this is a new one, and it was. And so I, I got it. Basically, had he hadn't even released it yet to order online, but he was already selling them on his merch table a couple weeks before. And so I just coincidentally had to look, got to luck out. This album now is going for like three hundred bucks on CD, and uh, it's pretty cool. But super stoked! I got a copy. Pepper's Ghost is uh, going for some chunk of change too now. I got this one back in the day when it came out. It's got the little head he wears on his hand. Um, killer albums. Buckethead's a freak. I got, a, I got quite a few Buckethead CDs and now I didn't realize they were worth so much money because I got into Buckethead a long time ago and uh, if you're a Buckethead fan right off, if you aren't, go check them out. Freaking amazing musician. All right. This Ornette Coleman box set. I popped it open. I've been listening to it. It's good. Is it great? It really just depends on what you like. This one, I think the reason I don't like it so much, there's not as much piano. One of the albums, maybe two of the albums. I think only one of them has piano. And a lot of it's just a trio with Ornette Coleman a bass player and a drummer and and that's great um, you really have to for me it's all about being in the mood and this one it feels like you really gotta be in the mood for something it's it's really unpredictable the quality it's Blue Note it's Tone Poet series so they did a great job on the quality all the records seem I pulled them all out I listened to there's a couple sides I basically listened to one side of each album I think and I listened to both sides of of the empty foxhole, which some people were like, "That shit's horrible." Uh, I I was I enjoyed it. I thought it was uh, the album cover. I wasn't too impressed with, but I thought it was neat that he had his son playing drums on there. And uh, but I feel like they should have. I don't want to say should have. That's way too strong. I feel like they could have. Could have done someone else for the box set, though. And not, not trying to take anything away from Ornette Coleman. I feel like they should have just released all this stuff anyway. Re-released all this anyways. And do a box set of someone else. Who? I don't know. I think McCoy Tyner would have been cool. A box set by just McCoy Tyner. Hold back on some of the ones and reissue. And, uh, do a box set for that. Or, uh, there's so many good artists, and I, 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 I haven't really, I've heard the name Ornette Coleman, but, you know, to release their first box set, limited, um, I don't know, I feel like they could have gone with something a little, 
so, you know, obviously they could have gone with someone else, but I, I just feel like for me, this one, had, I put it on, I'm like, it's good. It isn't super, super good yet. Um, or it would have been cool how they have, they have, um, Jackie McLean. Maybe do a box set of just Jackie McLean. You know, um, either way, I'm stoked I got it. It's basically the same price you would pay. You're, you're getting, what, six albums? And what are they, 35 bucks a piece? So you're kind of, you know, you're not really getting a deal. 200 bucks you almost are. But, um, I just feel like. I like got Bobby Hutchinson box set would have been dope. That would have been fat ass. Um, it's just because these albums are so... Just without the piano, it's just hard to get into. But that also sometimes is what's maybe cool about it. I don't know. It's feeling a little weird now. Alright, and the red like. So this album, has no piano. They did a good job on this. This album, I feel like, is better than anything that's in that damn box set at the moment. And so, and that's, could just be because I haven't, you know, I just started listening, you know, I've been listening to it off and on for the for a week now, I guess. But this thing, this shit's fire right here. So anyways, after I get off this, I mean, I'm going to do a comparison. I'm going to try the... I'm one of those people that if I don't like it at first, I don't completely give up. Uh, I want to... Sometimes I wonder why don't I like it as much. Uh, what, like, like, obviously you know there's certain parts of the song or the melody you're not really into. And it's called free jazz. I I think some of this is labeled free jazz. I think all jazz is free jazz, in my opinion, just because you're improvising all that stuff. And although even on the free jazz, they repeat a lot of the same melodies that they go back to. So it's not completely free. And then, you know, still a label of being jazz, you know, a label of another side thing of jazz, I guess, but it's all this, it's jazz. Um, I feel like Ornick Coleman is trying to force the weirdness more than the Don Cherry just flows with the weirdness. As far as just being unpredictable, I feel like uh, Ornick Coleman's trying too hard to play free jazz and Don Cherry just lets it happen. Tell me if I'm wrong. I'm totally, I'm totally fine with that. I, like I said, I don't know that much about Ornette Coleman until this box set came out. But I'm a big fan of the Tone Poet series. Uh, I don't have them all, but I have a good chunk of them. But like I said, you know, it, it would have been interesting if they would have picked someone else. So, anyways, that's my ramble on right now. I'm drinking hot tea. It doesn't got the punch like the coffee. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Stay positive, play out so vital, and um, leave a comment if you got the box set or uh, any of these other records I showed. Bye.